Uh, my name's Isaac and I'm talking to Pat O'Shane, a Kuku Lunji woman, teacher, public servant and magistrate and Socialist Alliance candidate for the seat of Leichhardt in far north Queensland. Um, thanks for talking to me, Pat. Hi, Isaac. Well, certainly climate action, that's, after all, that's the major threat, uh, rather, the major issue that the entire world has to address. Uh, we're, here in Australia, we're just ignoring it, actually. Our governments are ignoring it. Just last night, for instance, I watched a show on ABC uh, TV News where they had this murder sport rally um, near Rockhampton or outside Rockhampton where they race around spewing out massive uh, emissions, the very kinds of emissions that we should be putting a stop to. And I was really infuriated. Um, they seem to think that it's all jolly sticks, okay? Um, no government in this country, as far as I am aware, takes the issue seriously. They want to com continue um, cutting down trees and destroying flora and fauna in the southern states, including in Tasmania. I don't know a single government that has undertaken to restore forests in this country. Now, that's a very simple thing, action to undertake. Um, and meanwhile, they spend billions of dollars in so-called defence, which is in fact code for t sniping at China and, and other countries in the world. Well, for a start, uh, we have to... Large areas of the Daintree Forest have already been destroyed under the BLP Peterson government in the long, long ago, thank heavens. Uh, substantial uh, parts of the forest were alienated, cleared for wealthy people to come in and build their mansions overlooking the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, we can't afford to lose these iconic forests. They actually, as I put it, are the lungs of the world. We need them. Big issue is um, there is um, ensuring the lands are restored to the people, the owners, us, Cookie LNG people, and reforest reforestation take place. There are some people around who are trying to, who are attempting to restore parts of the forest. It's not enough. As to the Great Barrier Reef, uh, the local member here for Leichhardt, Warren Edge, was made envoy for the Great Barrier Reef, whatever an envoy is in, in those circumstances. And um, the news this weekend is that we take billions of dollars to, um, first of all, deal with the damage. Um, scientists have been reaping, you know, the spawn of um, coral spawn and growing them in laboratory situations and, and then trying to re regrow the reef from those uh, programs. It'll be interesting to see what eventuates from that. But in any event, unless we actually stop this madness that we're hurtling towards, it's just not going to happen with all the goodwill in the world of those scientists and others who are stretching their limits to try to save the reef. I went up there as the first part of my campaign amongst the communities in Leichhardt because uh, the islands are already impacted by rising sea levels. 
The first island I went to was Boigu, which is very close to the, the coast of New Guinea. You can see it just just across the way there. You could swim it if you wanted to, <laughs> to, to battle through the crocodiles. <laughs> but the whole place is inundated. Not to um, a huge effect just yet, but you can see it happening. And, and the people there are very, very distressed about what's occurring. Not only on Boigu, but others of other islands around as well. But Boigu is the one that is, at this point, um, most affected. We have thousands of people in, in this electorate who do not have affordable housing. Our governments the warmongers are happy to provide housing uh, for defence forces. Now, if they can do it for one cohort in the community, in the society, they can do it for all of them. But most especially for those who don't have the um, means, the resources to afford whatever housing is around at present. That private enterprise is, ent is allowed to buy up large blocks of land and put up large uh, buildings for which they ch uh, charge uh, outrageous rents is absolutely disgusting. We cannot call ourselves a democracy so long as those kinds of conditions prevail. What it means for Indigenous people, and it probably is for non-Indigenous people as well, is that whatever housing they may get, uh, they have to um, accommodate, as I found out uh, in one of the uh, islands I visited, three generations living in housing that is totally inadequate for the purpose and um, as, as well as that, well, what that actually leads to is, of course, serious health conditions. People can't live in those kinds of um, circumstances and enjoy good health. Furthermore, what we find is that people who are reduced to living in those uh, situations also cannot get access to decent jobs that pay livable wages. So we get this huge basket of problems and not one government, whether it is a Labour government like here in uh, Queensland, and certainly not the federal government, is prepared to put any uh, resources towards uh, lifting those people out of uh, absolutely abominable levels of poverty and uh, disadvantage. They've, they've had many problems during this period of pandemic since 2020 um, with their studies, with getting any uh, jobs to keep them going, for instance, in university, because of the fees that they have to pay. They can't find accommodation much of the time. I think it, uh, to, to do this to our upcoming generations, as this government is, is a form of torture. It is, a, a, and it's an absolute abrogation of any responsibility whatsoever. Well, as I said earlier, get rid of this government. <laughs> Mind you, there have been previous um, Labour governments which haven't done much better, I can assure you. Education should be free and secular.
from preschool, through primary school, through secondary school, through university. No two ways about it. We can't develop a society if we don't have uh, an educated uh, populace. Uh, what do they do? How do they do it? I mean, we need people who can reconfigure this Australian society. And you can't do that if you don't have the uh, knowledge and the skills. Well, first of all, uh, when I was going to school, we just knew that they were racist. I mean, those Queensland, where we are sitting now, uh, in far north Queensland, had has a history of the most uh, monstrous uh, uh, predations on the, on the Indigenous people. These were the real killing fields in this country and it's still going on. Firstly they were raised, they went out, they went out with, with guns of course, but there was a time when formalised police services in this state at least, if not in other states of Australia, were not uh, provided with handguns or rifles to go out and shoot people, as we've heard about in recent times, whether they are black, white or brindle, by the way. They uh, might have had truncheons, which they could, you know, I suppose bash people's heads in with, but that wasn't a common uh, occurrence that I came across. Uh, Australia is actually signatory to the UN Convention on Rights of the Child. And one of the big issues that I found and which continues is that children as young as 10 years old, right across this country, are being incarcerated. 10 year old kids are babies. It takes a long time for a person to grow up, especially young males. It's not just police services that we have to show, um, focus the spotlight on. It's governments and what they are doing in terms of the legislation that they uh, pass or that they install to deal with these people, it, with young people. It is, in my view, it's an admission of failure, monumental failure. And again, what is the purpose of, of conducting uh, our legal affairs in that way in relation to young people? What kind of a society are we developing? We are developing a failed society. It's, it's, it's something I have been very angry about for a very, very long time. If you don't have the infrastructures that I was speaking about earlier with housing, adequate housing, uh, where families are not living in overcrowded conditions, uh, where families have access to decent jobs, paying living wages, and then on top of that, treat the kids as though they were the perpetrators of all the evils in our society, that bespeaks um, a, a true failure, an ab abysmal failure on the part of every government in the country. We have to change that. I, I think our, our uh, call to arms, if you like, has to be, let's change the record. But my program 
apart from climate action, is housing, health, jobs, decent wages, education, of course. One of the issues, apart from climate change, that uh, causes a lot of anxiety and, and uh, even, I'd, uh, I uh, believe, mental health issues, is the way that the uh, Australian government, the present Australian government, is continually churning out propaganda about the uh, fact that China is just over the road there, or just over the sea, and that it has um, intentions uh, directed to Australia. I can tell you this, after living on this earth probably longer than any of those in federal parliament, China's not even interested in um, attacking Australia, but only a couple of weeks ago, Frydenberg insisted, stated, when he handed down the federal budget, that so many billions of dollars were going to defence causes um, and he, uh, on the basis that a country which does not have uh, huge defence uh, resources is likely to be subjected to coercion. Not only uh, that is a calculated statement, it is calculated to keep the populace, the Australian populace, in a state of uh, stress, anxiety. And what that does is, in turn, uh, play on their health um, uh, status. It's a very nasty way to uh, govern a, a country. And the young people of this country are the ones who will feel that most. Well, I, I, I'm, I mean, that's another, that's another exercise in removing people from society, like excluding people like society. I've I listened to ABC Radio this morning on this, this issue and um, Maurice Payne was being interviewed. They will not answer a single question. They can, they, they get uh, verbal diarrhoea and waffle on but say nothing of any essence whatsoever. I think it is appalling that that divas woman or divas well, she's probably very devious as well, she's probably rightly named, um, should behave in the way that she does. Um, most particularly because, in fact, the Morrison government has um, been prepared to protect people like, for instance, Porter as a Attorney General. People, uh, and Morrison himself, entertain Houston of Hillsong. People who have been shown to be undesirables. I, I think it is absolutely outrageous that they play these politics of, divide, of division and, and um, are prepared to abuse uh, young people in particular and women like Grace Tame and, and um, others. They, they are not fit to hold high office and they are certainly not fit to be um, Re, uh, return to government. Well, what I've been speaking about is the need to to, pe to treat 
all of the members of our society in an equitable, fair and equitable way, fair and just way. And that means people of all uh, colours, people of all sexual and other persuasions, everybody is worth, every person is worth as much as the other person. That's my view. We should be building a society that values all of its members and works to give, keep all of its members in, um, as part of the community, making the contributions that they can make to them. I noticed that footballers are paid hundreds of thousands of dollars even millions of dollars. I notice that tennis players are the same. I notice that road sports gets the same. I mean, what is this total uh, emphasis on having masses of money? When I was a kid, I, I read the Bible. Later, I went and studied theology at Sydney University. And I think it was said that somewhere within the Bible that we um, accept those who are poor and disadvantaged. We need to ensure that all members of our community, from the youngest to the oldest, are treated with respect and consideration.